Hey everybody, Mr. Mangatash here and Apple just released macOS Monterey Beta 10. This could be the final beta release before the public launch next week because Apple just gave out event invites for the MacBook Pro event on Monday, October 18th at 12 o'clock Central Standard Time. We've been waiting for these MacBook Pros for months and they're finally going to be launched. This is really exciting. So I'm going to talk about a possible release schedule. I'm going to go over all the fixes and features in Beta 10 along with some news on Universal control plus I'm going to talk about some updates on Hatch Sur along with some Bluetooth trouble on OpenCore Legacy Patcher and Beta 10 so we got lots to cover let's jump in and get started Let's take a quick look at the full release schedule of the beta releases that were Apple released today. iOS 15.1 beta 4, iPad OS beta 4, Watch OS beta 4, TV OS beta 4, Audio OS for HomePod beta 4, and on the Mac OS side, they released Mac OS Big Sur 11.6.1 release candidate, and they changed the build number for, from 214 to 219, and they also released a final beta of Catalina 2021-007 security update and that's an interesting situation because most likely Apple is going to release all three of those operating systems the same day that they release macOS Monterey to the public so they'll release the public version of macOS Monterey macOS Big Sur 11.6.1 and the security update for Catalina 2021 007 so that's why those releases are pretty significant and that's why they hit release candidates so there should be no version changes with the macOS Sur or the Catalina security update Next, next, let's talk about how Apple released beta 10. Usually Apple releases the Delta update and software update first, and also the M1 Apple Silicon full IPSW restore file. Then tomorrow, the next day, they'll release the public beta for everybody that's on the public beta to be able to download and install and the full installer. But today was different. Apple released a Delta, the M1 IPSW restore file, and the public beta was also released because I have a machine set up for the public beta, and as soon as it showed up I was really surprised because again usually it shows up the next, next day so let's talk about the update sizes and this is significant because this is the first time that one of the Delta updates for macOS Monterey has been under two gigabytes look at this 1.6 gigabytes from beta 9 to beta 10 beta 8 2 gigabytes and beta 7 2.1 so let's take a peek at that we'll go to our beta 10 system here and this is what it looks like ready to get the installer 1.62 gigabytes and then the full size or the actual size was 2.32 gigabytes on this 2020 m1 mac mini now let's talk about the fixes and changes in mac os monterey beta 10. now as you can see i always do a comparison between the patch notes because Apple just clumps them all together. So I'll pull both of them into BB Edit and do a comparison. And in this situation, there's only two changes between beta 9 and beta 10. The resolve issue for the App Store was removed from the beta 10 patch notes and a new known issue was added for core data. We would really like Apple to add the issues here that most of us care about because I'll give you an example. A user on Reddit mentioned that he was having problems dragging and dropping messages from the messages app and he was hoping that it was fixed in beta 10 and one of the users responded and said hey I was having the same issue and it was fixed for me in beta 10 why isn't that in the patch notes it would be really helpful if all the developers are spending all this time tracking down these bugs to get them fixed put them in the patch notes let us know that you're doing all this hard work to fix macOS Monterey we want to know about it I do that's what I do here so again we have these patch notes but they're not good enough let's hope Apple can improve on this. Now let's talk about universal control. I've been talking about universal control, which seems like months and months and months, right? We finally have a development with universal control. If we open up system preferences here on a beta 10 system and then go into displays and then go into advanced, we see universal control options here with a brand new beta option. So, and that's the same thing that they did for the private relay for Safari on iOS and macOS for the iCloud Plus plan. They put it into beta and we like to see that because again, what Apple's saying here is that we're gonna provide it to you, but it might not work exactly like we expect it to, so it's in beta form. When it is in production version, that beta tag will be removed from the option set here. Now, the problem is, is that when you look at this, you think, hey, it's ready to go, right? Well, unfortunately not, it does not work. And you'll also notice that I have mine checked in here because I 
installed that feature flags hack that I showed you in a previous video, how to get Universal Control working between two Macs. So I usually take that out before I update to make sure that Apple hasn't fixed it first. But as soon as I came in, I could not select this. This wasn't selected and I could not click on here. You would click on here and nothing would happen. So even though the options are here, it wasn't enabled yet. So I went in there, enabled those feature flags, and then I could come in here and select this. Is I also updated my T2 Mac Mini to see if it's still working in the now we got good news and bad news about this situation the good news is is that we see that apple has finally made a movement in universal control but the bad news is it doesn't work with the ipad i updated my ipad today to the latest version of 15.1 beta 4 and the options inside the ipad are not enabled yet but after i enable the feature flag settings we can use universal control between two beta 10 max so let's look at what that looks like so if we go back into the mac mini here let's click add display look at this and we'll zoom in here so you can see this link keyboard and mouse so if we click on the 2018 mac t2 mac mini here and then all we need to do is drag the mouse to the t2 mac mini seamless right to the other side and i can change the screen and move around in the t2 mac mini and that's great but again the ipad doesn't work so let's take a look at so that if we go back to add display here we can see that the ipad is in here and detected but it's not listed under here under link keyboard and mouse so if we wanted to look at those settings we could actually turn it on to connect to the mac we have the ipad in here we can move the windows around a little bit here and then the ipad's here so if we go to the advanced and settings here we can see and there's the iPad in here and you can see use as as you can change it to the main display but there, it's missing the option here to link the keyboard and mouse and I'll show you that that's what it should look like linked keyboard and mouse and that's what it would say if we were connected to the iPad you can click on advanced here to look at those settings here and a lot of you were asking hey where's sidecar settings I did go over that in the previous update but the sidecar settings are in here now and the system preference option for sidecar is no longer here so that's something to look out for if you're looking for sidecar so to disconnect all we need to do is right click and disconnect so again we're getting close whether apple is going to be able to get this working in the release candidate is another story that would be really fast for them to be able to do it so it's possible that we might see universal control in 12.1 or something like that coming later so we'll have to keep an eye on that now let's talk about some performance benchmarks. Again, we just do this to make sure that it's equal or very close to the previous version of Beta 9. And Beta 9 did a single core of 1746 and a multi-core of 7690. And on Beta 10, it ran a 1754, really close. And for a multi-core, 7777. Close there, no big changes in any of the Geekbench benchmark scores. Let's talk about some unsupported Big Sur and macOS Monterey patcher news. So last week I mentioned that Ben was back and then he was going to get Patch Sur back online and guess what he did. So let's take a look at that. This is the new Patch Sur GitHub page and I'm going to put a link in the description in there. I talked to Ben about this and you have to be able to install the patch sir version 1.01 onto your patch sir mac to be able to get it back in sync with the server and github once you do that patch sir will be fully up and working again and i worked with ben and i'm going to put a video together that shows you how to do that and walk you through the entire process so this is really great news for patch sir next let's talk about open core legacy patcher in beta 10. so what's interesting is is again as soon as the betas come out the open core devs jump right in to start testing and right off the bat they have already found a problem with Bluetooth and beta 10. So before you jump to beta 10, hold off for just a little bit until this can be figured out. I don't know if there's a workaround just yet, but again, this is just some breaking news that just came out earlier today. And that's the current situation with Open Core Legacy Patcher. Again, we're getting really close. Hopefully we can get this fixed because again, we've got the possible release next week at the event. That's it for the unsupported Mac news. Now let's talk about the Apple event, the new MacBook Pros, and a possible release schedule for macOS Monterey. What's really exciting about this event is that we haven't had MacBook Pros since 2019. So there's a real bubbling demand for the new MacBooks, especially with the new M1, whatever it's going to be called, M1 
Max or M1 Pro or M1X or whatever they're going to call the processor, people have wanted the developer versions, this 16 inch version of the MacBook Pro and a new 14 inch version. What's interesting about these laptops is, is that there was a stolen schematic that was released because uh, hackers broke into one of Apple's suppliers and leaked some of these images here showing an SD card reader, MagSafe, and an HDMI port. So that's what people are excited about right now. Again, these are alleged, but the fact that Apple or someone paid because they didn't release all of the plans and information that they got from the supplier, it puts a little bit of weight behind some of these rumors, right? If this new laptop comes out and it has all these features that they used to have that's all we've been asking for we want to be able to use these ports this is a macbook pro this is not a macbook this is not a macbook air this is a pro version for developers photographers video everything in between and that's why we want to be able to have these ports to be able to plug in our sd card be able to plug in an external monitor without all these dongles and having magsafe for just power and not being able to trip over the cord, ripping the MacBook off the desk, because MagSafe, in my opinion, is one of the greatest computer inventions in the last 15 years. It's just a wonderful invention. And when Apple took that away in 2016, it was a huge miss and everybody loved it. So if that makes a comeback, everybody's gonna be very happy about that. Now let's talk about when macOS Monterey might be released. So if we pull up the calendar here, we've got the date here on the 18th. Now, if we looked at November of last year, Apple had the event on the 10th, and then two days later released macOS Big Sur. So it's possible that they had the event here and they release macOS Monterey on the 20th on a Wednesday, but it could be maybe Thursday or it might even be the next day. We're gonna to have to see. They could surprise us and say MacOS Monterey is released now. They need to give us a release candidate first. And that's usually a version of the operating system that is very close to final. And that's what Apple did before, about one week before, a couple days before. And that's what Apple did. They gave us a macOS Big Sur release candidate seven days before the final release came out. The issue here is, is that the release candidate might not be the same version because you can see here that the build version is still a beta version. Because, and the reason why they do that is that they don't want to have the information in the installer about board IDs released before the event on the 18th. We're going to have to see how this goes. Again, we might get a release candidate on there. The schedule is getting very tight in here and they might push it off for another week. It's going to be interesting to see if they follow what they did last year. Tell me in the comments what you're most excited to see. Are you going to be buying a new MacBook Pro? Have you been waiting for a while until Apple released a new M1 MacBook Pros? Tell me in the comments. I can't wait to what you hear to say about this. If you thought this video created value for you, give it a thumbs up or share it. I'd really appreciate it. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, click on that subscribe button. And as always, if you're already a subscriber and a view, I really appreciate it. And we'll catch you in the next video. Thanks. For the new MacBook Pros that are, we've been waiting for far.